My name's Yusuf Ibrahim. Zion. Professional boxer. Three fights, three wins. Signed by Derek Chisora. Without boxing, I don't know where I'd be. I want to be world champion in different weight categories. I just want to build a legacy and I want to build a great one as well. Live the same day for a while, it's repetitive. Wanna make a change, most niggas weren't getting it. Never took a brisk and ended up regretting it. Took losses, but I just focused on the benefits. The fam getting benefits. Zion. Council houses so overcrowded. Never gets quiet, it's always loud. Tell my little bro, could you turn it down? You gotta learn how to drown out all the noise. Treat the girls like a princess, play fight with the boys. Oldest child, some things you can't avoid. Feeding the fam is what brings me joy. So I grew up, born and bred in Northampton. Went primary school here, went secondary school here. And yeah, all my friends and family are from here. So I started boxing when I was like five, six years old. Uh, my uncle used to box, who's my coach, and um, used to always come gym with him, see him do it, used to join in as well. Then he started taking us to like the parks and everything, doing pads with him at his house, at the parks. Then once he thought we were ready, he took us to the gym, like took me to the gym. And yeah, that's where it all started. We was outside the gym, we'd be in our gardens doing pad work and things when Yusuf come around, you'd see it. And he just got into it from a really young age, same with Yahya. They both really got into it at a young age. And because they was watching me the whole time, he must have been about seven years old, eight years old, he just wanted to come to the gym. So at first I used to bring him just with me privately and just work private with me and my friends. And then when I felt like he was good enough, I put him through to the main coaches and they liked what they saw and just went from there. You'd think to, to box you need to learn how to throw your hands. With, with my uncle, it was fir first thing we learned was to, how to move our feet. And then from there, in Pittsford, literally, in a random place in the park, we'd do pad work, he'd take us for runs. It's all, all through my uncle. He's what introduced us, made us go this far. So NABC is the club, Northampton Amateur Box Club, the club that I grew up in, did my amateur fights with. And yeah, it's literally where I, because I moved out from the area, but I used to live like two minutes away from here, so it's quite convenient. I used to train here every day and yeah, did my whole amateur career with them. That's it, that's it! Sure. 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 Yeah. Boxing, we think, is a brilliant sport for discipline, you know, just keeping kids off the street and keeping them fit. You learn so much doing boxing as well, so I think with Northampton, it was going downhill, but slowly you see it's picking up and we've got loads more gyms now. And we've got about four or five gyms in Northampton, so I think it's brilliant. And with all the knife crime and everything going up, I think there's nothing better than to introduce boxing gyms and things to the kids. I was originally supposed to turn professional when I was like 18 years old after my first senior bout, but then um, COVID hit and so it just dragged everything out. But you know, everything happens for a reason. Uh, straight after COVID, I turned professional in 2021 and I signed with Derek Chisora. And then I had my first professional fight in 2022, February. Like from like five, six years old, I knew this is what I wanted to do and like, I want to be world champion, man. Like I went to, um, I remember when it like proper clicked in was when uh, my uncle took me to a boxing show, like an amateur show, and I was just watching and I was like to my uncle like, yo, I need to jump on this, man. I need to, I need to fight, man. I need to fight. And yeah, that's where it all basically started. I don't think if my uncle wasn't in my life, I don't know. I think I'm meant for boxing, but I think it would have taken me a bit longer to get into it. But yeah, it was definitely my uncle who motivated me into it. Professional boxing is just way more serious. You have to take everything like proper. You, like you have to train hard. You have to take the diet seriously. It's just a lot more. It's like a different. It's a whole new world. Obviously, losses do matter, but 
it's not as serious as when you take on in professional boxing. Uh, you take a loss in professional boxing, it takes you a few steps back. So you don't really want to be taking losses in professional boxing, you just want to take wins. It feels very political, amateur boxing, because you could box the best you've ever boxed and they don't give you the decision. And it's one of them, the losses are, put, it's like, they brush the sides, you get what I mean? Like you take a loss and it's like, oh, the next one, the next one could be the next, next week, next two weeks. With professional boxing, it's more organised. You can see that, oh, you've got a date, you've got a six week camp. But with amateur boxing, you could be fighting week after week after week after week. Amateur boxing is like your GCSEs. You get your GCSEs, you do your A-levels. Once you get your A-levels, you go to get your degree. Now, once you, you go to get your degree, you have to work. The work is the pro. Do you understand? So amateur boxing to me is like getting all your qualifications. Going pro is like using those qualifications to now really earn your money. It's, it's, without dedication and discipline, you're not going far in the sport. Uh, I literally train two, three times a day, every day, except for one day of the week. And you have to give it your all, because if you don't give it your all, you're not getting far. It's not, it's not a sport you take that light-hearted. Yeah, Yusuf uses the facilities here. He's been, he's been boxing here since amateur. It's not just about the facilities, it's how comfortable he is with the people here as well and the surroundings. I think sometimes being comfortable helps you to train a little bit better. But at the same time, he's obviously got his other side in London as well doing his thing. But here we've got everything we need. We've got all the bags, we've got the gym, we've got all the weights and everything, so all the speed balls and things. But there isn't anything that, if anything happened in London, we could do his full training here if we wanted to. And vice versa, if anything happened here, he's got everything he needs in London. Because both of his coaches are separate and he's travelling a lot, it, it helps to have everything you need in both places. Combination work is literally um, helps you with stamina and everything. Um, just drills it into you. We've been doing it for years, so like if my uncle just says a combination to me, I just oh, I can bang it out straight away. When you're doing combinations, it drills it into you and lets you mix up your shots, and make, lets you like, be more creative with your punch work. <laughs> Especially when you come with a skillful fighter, you throw ones and twos at him, he's just going to slip and slide all day long. But once you start throwing punches in bunches, it's important because not only can you surprise your opponent a lot more, not only does it keep your fitness up as well if you're doing it while you're training, you can also throw away punches to set them up for later on. I think when you go pro, you start learning to set traps for your opponent. And being able to throw good combinations, creative combinations, would definitely help you do that. Boxing's like very unpredictable. Like so many things has happened like in amateur in, in amateur boxing i had i should have had more like 20 more fights than i should have because of all the cancellation and everything but yeah i was supposed to fight february 4th and then last minute it got cancelled due to like difficulties and everything um but yeah we just take on the chin and we move on When Ramadan comes, it's the most important thing that like, don't think about fighting or boxing during Ramadan because I got offered a fight during Ramadan and I turned it down because I'm fasting and I don't really want to deviate from religion on that month and focus on other things because religion for me is number one. But during Ramadan, we mainly focus on strength and conditioning because it's, we do stuff that we really wouldn't do in camp because lifting weights and everything makes you slower. So we wouldn't really do it in camp, we'd focus more on higher reps, low weight, uh, more so on the conditioning. I was that kid in school, shutting them sweets. No, I'm not a trapper, but I'm tunnel down peas. If I get bored, I play with the keys. Coat white sneaks if they crease by. When you're using certain muscles, you use them over and over again, they run out of oxygen. 
So to learn them to work without using as much oxygen is where the strength and conditioning comes in. You can't tell me about drip bars and seeds cos I got em. Have you ever wore rip gums and fleece cos I've done it. Now my fam all done, that puff got peas, now we're starting. Pursuit onto gold bars and cheese cos we want it. Nowadays it's no sleep on trees and I love it. Switch, last turn. In boxing, there's like little segments that all need to add up to make a fighter. So you have the skill and the technique, and then you have the strength and the conditioning. If you don't have the strength and the conditioning, the conditioning especially, you won't be able to last all them rounds. You won't be able to go like 12 rounds, four rounds, eight rounds. Um, and the strength, the strength is like, let's say if I hit uh, my opponent with power, with it slow them down. I can take them out easier and it just gives you a more stronger presence in the ring. Like imagine you being like really strong that when your opponent hits you, you don't even move. Like that's what I want to be like. I want to be like a brick wall in the in the ring. Yo, yo, he's not doing it properly. Yeah, yeah. Yo, don't, don't. Put my hand up. Oh, yeah. Do I put my hand up? Back here now. So some good stretch. Can I see your back? So So what's this working on? I'm working on the triceps in the back. Oh, yeah? No, you should feel it around there. Oh, okay. So what's that part called? Uh, trapezium. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Legs are, come on. Strength and conditioning done today. We do this like four times a week. But yeah, every night, 11.30, 10 o'clock, get a two hour intense session in. This is what makes you stronger, more conditioned, and makes me last long in the ring. <laughs> Uh, I run around, I'd say, five, six times a week. It varies, I run in, uh, some days I might run midday, some days I might run in the morning or at night. But I prefer doing it at night because it's quiet, it's dark, and it's just more motivating for me. It just pushes me a lot more. And my body's warmer, so I go a bit more faster as well. They wanna hear a soft story, but it really don't matter. Forget the past, I need my future focus looking fatter. They hear me when I speak, so now my ears don't matter. They say I take the piss, the Maggie's feeling up my body. a lot of chances. I'm always looking Because we're always training after um, iftar, there's only so much you can do. So if I'm coming to do a strength conditioning session for two hours, I don't think I'd really be going on a run because it's just the time between iftar and suhoor is a bit short. So I've been doing less runs um, during Ramadan, but I still get in about, about three runs a week, I'd say, but they'd all be long runs. I feel differently another day So it don't matter A light 50 minute jog. We do this five times a week, vary it. Sometimes a short, fast one or a long jog, steady pace. So, what separates you from the rest, man? What's gonna make me a champion? Midnight, it's like, what's the time right now? Like one o'clock. They're sleeping right now. You're sleeping right now. I'm awake running, man. No sleep. No sleep for the wicked, man. And now, entering the arena, please welcome Yusuf Ibrahim. We're young Yusuf Ibrahim. See, when I walked out there, I tripped over on my, on my entrance. I tripped over a few times, but I was hoping no one saw that. 
Derek Chisora, who we met through his nephew not too long ago. Chisora saw some of his fights, took a liking to him, and you'll see why the, the Nassim Hamed influence is clear in his style. Low, fast hands, those exaggerated dips, slips and pulls to get himself out of trouble, and he's not short of confidence either. Going into the ring, like, me, I get, I'm a nervous person, but it's, you never get more, less nervous than the last fight. If anything, you get more nervous, but it's the way you deal with it. You deal with it a lot better. Like every time I'm confident, I'm confident within myself, but I, I just get nervous because I want to bring the best out of myself. It's not nervous because I'm scared of my opponent. I'm scared of this, I'm scared of that. It's not that, it's nervous because I want to perform. I want to be good. I want to be entertaining. I want to be, I want to be something that like, I have a really good performance. That's what, that's what I get nervous about, bringing the best out of myself. Riding out of North End. And ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Yusuf Ibrahim. Yeah, it's a slight delay to the start of proceedings, but thanks for those of you who've stuck with us, and welcome to those of you just joining us on Before the Belt, live from the O2 Arena, Chris Lloyd and Darren Barnes. This, this is what, like, after my fight, this is what made me blow. I had, like, over a million views on this on Instagram. There's so many boxing pages that just took this clip, and they've all got, like, over a million views on them. I remember when I did that as well, and everyone was asking me like, how did I skip, um, dodge the second punch, but literally just instant. And I remember I was just like, yo, after after I do a move or something, I always think in my head like, yo, begs they got that in, like on camera, like, begs they got it, man. That was a good clip. Cause straight after that clip, that like, straight after I did that after my fight. We went back to the changing room and I was like to my brother, me and my brother were talking about like, yo, yo, and we were trying to search, we were trying to look but for as it. he goes up the levels, he, he can't be afforded to, to rush into to shots like that as he just hugs his uncle before the start of uh, round number two. Long, long way to go in this young man's apprenticeship and again back to centre ring, hands low. Again, you see Rodriguez looking to pull the trigger on that counter at the moment that... And the, this point here, yeah, did the Ali shuffle. It'll be interesting to see how Rodriguez approaches the fight from now on. You can see him at the end I was of the thinking that after I did, like, did the Ali shuffle, I was like, please, I need to land, I need to land. Because if I did the Ali shuffle and I didn't land after that, it just looked a bit stupid. So I had, like, when, I, when I went back, I seen I landed, I was like, yeah, I was happy with that. No, it, was, it was good. Um, I'd say the best moment in my life was my second fight. Um, I think it was my best performance because the opponent got the best out of me because he was coming for me. Um, my third fight is just the opponent kind of just sat there and wasn't really coming at me, bringing the best out of me. Uh, second fight is just the experience, the, the weigh-in, the press conferences, public workout, everything. It was, just a, it was a crazy experience. Um, it's something I've always dreamt of. It's not surprising because I thought I'd be, I'd get there, but I just got there sooner than I thought I would. But yeah, it was, it was, a, it was the best week of my life. That's what I'd put it as. It was like a movie from the media day, see, literally walking past people that we used to look up to, and it, and it just felt, felt surreal. Even the little luxuries like staying in the Canary Plaza Hotel, we had the most beautiful view of the whole city. It just, it just felt like a dream come true. Ladies and gentlemen, after four rounds here at the O2 Arena, we go to referee Chaz Coakley's scorecard. It reads 40 to 36 for your winner. He's still undefeated from Northampton, Yusuf Ibrahim. In my world, nobody gets hungry. In my world, ain't no hate, it's just love. In my world, whole gang be getting that money. In my world, 
My London gym is uh, is located in Camden, so I started um, taking the train there, including all the trip from home to the train station and everything. It all equals up to like two hours, but you know th these are the sacrifices you're gonna have to make. Like, I don't really think about it because I've got one aim, one goal, where I want to be, and this is what I just have to do to get there. But I, I love training in um, London. CJ, CJ is a great coach. He's added a lot more stuff to my like skill set and everything. Um, he's given me that pro aspect to everything. Uh, he keeps me, he keeps me on the track. He keeps me focused. Um, he, he's added like he just gives me a different insight into everything. And his knowledge about boxing is very high. So he sees things that I don't see in myself. He's yeah, it just improves my skill set and my, and my fitness as well. I've seen my brother wake up at 5 a.m. to get ready to go to London for 6 a.m. type thing. So he gets to the train station at 6 a.m., does his training session, comes back, and then he's got uni straight after. So that takes a lot. He, he can't really go out with his friends as much. He sees them like once a week. Even me, myself, I live in the same house as him. I don't see him as much. But that's, that's what it takes. Yeah, I travel to London and back four times a week. But it depends, because sometimes when the fight's closer, close to the fight, um, I'm here like every day. But yeah, we get that work in. CJ gives like a different aspect of professional boxing to me. That when I work with my uncle, he gives me one way, CJ gives another way. We just get that work in, man. I get most of my sparring down here. Um, I did 18 rounds the other day in a row. Yeah, it's good work. No one wants to travel two hours here, two hours back, but it's what you got to do, man. It's what you got to do to be champion, be the best. Everything comes with sacrifices, man. And someday it will pay off, inshallah. I, I think that Yusuf has made a lot of sacrifices from the moment he started boxing. I remember all he does is train. And it's not just about sacrificing your time to be in the gym. It's about once you're not in the gym, you still got to live like you're a boxer. My brother, you don't see anyone as hardworking as my brother. They don't have as fleshy footwork. They're not making a man miss twice and then turning him around and laughing at him. He's different. I've, I've experienced everything, I'd say, in my last three fights. Not everything, but I've got a good taste of everything. I know when to sit down on my shots, when to dance around. I've got, I've got the feeling of the ring now, and like, this next fight's gonna be my best fight yet. If you have a goal, if you have a dream, just stick at it, just stay disciplined, stay dedicated to that one goal, one dream. And if you put the time in the, the work in, you're gonna get there eventually. But just have faith and just believe in yourself. That's the main thing, just believe in yourself and you'll get there. I breathe out and then I breathe in I thank God I'm still breathing I know I'm here for a reason Bring the G's in, believe it I breathe out and then I breathe in I thank God I'm still breathing I know I'm here for a reason Bring the G's in, believe it 
All I wanted to do was just raise up a stack. I got family depending on me for the bag. Selling my soul, I will never do that, bro. I know that you know that it's deeper than rap. I know that I'm here and I'm stuck in the trap, but I'm doing my fire. I'm running these laps. I've been messing around with a digital dash. Finding a way to invest all this cash, but it isn't clear. Nah, trying that once in my ear. Nah, now I see things clear. Nah, trying to keep things real. Yeah, that's how real niggas feel. Yeah, thanking God that I'm still here, living life with no fear. I'm breathing and I breathing. I thank God I'm still breathing. I know I'm here for a reason. Bring the G.